Well, it's the middle of the afternoon and it might as well be the middle of the night. It is really dark here. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. A couple of weeks ago, it was something called Folktale Week. Now, Folktale Week is something that I had come across on Instagram. The way it works is every, every November, there are a series of seven prompts are posted, and then artists and illustrators from all over the place post, create artwork around those prompts and post them on Instagram. And for the past few years, I've just enjoyed seeing what other people do for Folktale Week, and I... And there are some really beautiful things that people post, but it's not really the type of art that I do myself. And I've never felt the need to to create any art for Folktale Week, but that changed this year because over the last couple of months, I have been up to my elbows, almost literally in stinging nettles, but in a good way. Here's what I've been doing. I've been harvesting stinging nettles, processing them, turning them into cordage. Here are some off the dried leaves. Here's a braid, a four strand braid. I've been documenting them here in this book. Here's some fiber that I've been processing to spin to turn it into yarn. It's very similar to linen yarn. And I've got a few more pages to go. I'm hoping to be able to spin enough fiber to weave a small, at least a small sample. And maybe eventually I'll even make a garment. But as part of this exploration that I'm doing through a group called the Earth Hand Gleaner Society, they have something that they're calling Lessons from the Nettle Sister. We talked about a fairy tale called the Wild Swans. And in this fairy tale, a young girl has to weave some coats for her brothers. Her brothers have been turned into a pack of wild swans and in order to get them back into their human form, she has to make them weave coats for them. Now, I knew the story before, but one of the things that I did not remember was that she used nettles to make the coats for her brothers. Apparently I'd block that part because I had a traumatic experience with stinging nettles as a child and as a result I've not been able to go anywhere near them for my almost my entire life. So then you're wondering how did I do all this? Well part of this process for me is to relearn some of those long-held beliefs that I have and I'm starting with something that's scary for me and I'm trying to rework my my feelings around the whole stinging nettle thing. But in rereading the story, I realized how unsympathetic to nettles and sort of unaware of the uses of nettles the story actually was. And I probably would not have noticed that if I hadn't been doing this exploration. So I thought that I would retell the story. Oh my goodness, there's so much. Okay, so I decided that this year for Folktale Week, I would retell the story of what I'm calling the Nettle Sister. So I've rambled on long enough now. Let me, let me show you my interpretation of the Wild Swan story. I call it the the Nettle Sisters story, and my goodness did I learn a lot. And I will start out by saying it's not per perfect. It may not even be good. I don't usually do illustrations this way. It was very challenging for me and took a lot more time than I had anticipated. But I decided that I the story needed to be told and I needed to tell it, so here it is. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy it and ignore any of the bits that are imperfect. The Nettle Sister's Story Moon Nettie was in the village graveyard where she was gathering nettle stalks by the light of the full moon. She planned to use them to make a very special present for her amma. She wasn't at all scared of the nettle plants. She had a lot of respect for them and the gifts that they shared. She had learned long ago how to hold them so she did not feel their sting. 
She was not at all scared to be in the graveyard at night either. In fact, it was one of her favorite places. She felt close to her mother there. She couldn't really remember her mother, but this is where everyone from the village was buried, and she thought her mother and all her ancestors were there, watching over her. She knew that the village priest was there watching her, too. She wasn't scared of him, either. Well, not really. Maybe a little. She knew he did not like her or her ama. As she worked, Netty told the nettles a story. It was the only gift she had to share with them in return for their generosity. Dream. Netty told the nettles about a dream she had about her older brothers during the time that they had all lived together in the strawberry pink mansion. They had been so happy there together, but that was a very long time ago. The nettles had been their playthings then. They had learned to grasp the nettles firmly, sliding their hands from the ground up to avoid being stung. They would have battles with the plants, waving them around and trying to hit each other with the leaves. Nettie was very good at this game and she had earned the nickname Nettle Sister because she always ended up with a few stings. The siblings made loud hooting sounds whenever they were stung. It was part of a secret language that they had made up so they could talk to each other without anyone else knowing what they were saying. Amma said they sounded just like a pack of wild swans. Feast Nettie told the Nettles about a meal that they had had at the Strawberry Pink man Mansion. She called it the Last Feast. It was certainly the last time she had seen so much food together, all together in one place. Just thinking about it made her feel hungry. Nettie didn't really understand everything that happened that night. She knew it was her oldest brother's birthday. She remembered being at the table in the big dining room with her brothers and her father. There was a stranger there with them, too, someone she had never seen before. The table was piled high with all sorts of delicious foods, but she was sure there was no nettle pie. It was her favorite meal, but it was not the type of food that was served in the strawberry pink mansion, especially when they had a guest. Even without the nettle pie, Nettie was enjoying herself at the feast. And then suddenly everything changed. People were yelling, cups were knocked over, her brothers leapt to their feet, their chairs crashed to the ground. That's when Amma came to take Nettie away. She wrapped Nettie in her warmest coat and said they were going to spend the night at her cottage. Nettie was happy to go. She didn't like the fighting and she had spent many nights in Amma's cozy home before this. She liked it there. Awakening. When Nettie awakened the next morning, Amma gave her a cup of nettle tea and said it was time to go back to the mansion. This too was not unusual. Whenever there was a fight between her father and her brothers, everything seemed to be back to normal the next day. This time was different. As Nettie and Amma approached the strawberry pink mansion, Nettie had a feeling that something was not right. The house seemed unusually quiet and she couldn't see anyone moving around. This was strange. With so many brothers, there was always someone playing outside. Today, there was nobody. When they got to the mansion, they found the front gate locked. Nettie noticed that Amma picked up a large envelope tucked into the gate. She put it into her bag, but she had never mentioned it again. All she said was that Nettie would now live with her in the cottage all the time. Nettie was happy to that she could be with Amma always, but she was also confused. Where had her father and brothers gone? No matter how many times she asked, Amma never told her. Bird. Some days later, Nettie was working outside her cottage mending her fishing nets. This was a special day. It was the anniversary of the day that she had come to live with Amma. She had finished the present that she had been making, and she planned to give it to Amma tonight during their evening meal. She wanted to catch a fish to make their supper extra special. As she worked, Nettie noticed an unusual flock of noisy birds flying overhead. She could sense something prickling at the edge of her memory, and even though she had never seen this type of bird in the area before, there was something familiar about them. She was sure she had heard their calls before. She just couldn't remember where. River 
Later, when Nettie went down to the river to fish, she noticed the same group of birds that she had seen flying overhead. Sitting on the ground, they looked just like the pictures of swans she had seen in a book back when she had lived in the strawberry pink mansion. That prickling memory became clear and she realized she could understand what the birds were saying to each other. They were speaking the secret language that she and her brothers had, had used so long ago. At the same time, as if a fog had been lifted from her eyes, the swans turned into young men. She knew they were her brothers. Nettie called out to them in their secret language, Hello, wild swans, it is me, your nettle sister. Sky. The siblings were overjoyed to see each other. There was so much they had to say. They talked together for many hours and the sky turned dark. Suddenly Nettie realized it was well past supper time and she had forgotten all about catching a fish. Vegetable soup would have to do. She quickly gathered some plants that grew by the river bank and they all started walking back to the cottage. As they got close to home, the siblings heard a call in their secret language. It had to be Amma. No one else even knew that the language existed. They listened to the words. The message said, Not safe. Do not come in. Go to her grave. So that's as far as the Folktale Week prompts take us. Obviously, there's much more to the story. And I do know what happens in the rest of the story, but that the telling will have to wait for another day perhaps until the 2022 Folktale Week. Well, hopefully not that long. Hopefully I will make another video in the next few months finishing the stories.